Holy Did y'all just see that damn deer come out of there? Well, I thought I was gone. I thought something done got me, man. That scared me. Man, it's hotter than a hoochie coochie out here and stickier than Billy Bob's neck rose. Yeah, I don't know. I just made it up. What's going on with all my outdoor junkies out there today? I want to take y'all back to about a year ago when I first started my YouTube channel and uploaded a video where I showed y'all how to make this little do-it-yourself trail camera mount. Now overall that's been a good video for me. I've gotten a lot of great feedback off of it, but especially on the outdoor forums there's been a lot of y'all asking if I could come up with a way to do this without you having to put screws in the tree because the area you live in won't allow that or you're either using it on public land. So I came up with a little idea today. It ain't nothing fancy, but it works, and it allows you to use this exact same mount without putting a screw in the tree. On the other hand, there's a few of y'all saying that you didn't understand why you'd want to use a mount over traditional straps. Well, stick around. I'm going to show you why this is so much more beneficial than straps. And for those still not familiar with this, I'll post a link down in the description that shows you everything you need to know step by step on how to make this, what you need to make it, and how to use it, and all that stuff. But if you're ready to take your trail cam game to the next level, let's go. We all know what it's like fighting with sticks, trying to wedge them behind your trail camera to get that perfect angle. Dang it. But with a trail camera mount, you're pretty much unlimited in what you can do with it. Pan left, pan right, lock your wing nut down whenever you get it where you want it. You can tilt it down, tilt it up, whatever you need to do. All right, this is going to be kind of a hidden Easter egg of sorts to find out who's paying attention and to test y'all's knowledge and just to interact with y'all a little bit. I already know what this is, but I want to see if the viewers know. It's a wild growing vine. This is what the leaves look like. And it produces fruit, but this is not ripe yet. But comment down below and let me know if you know what this is. All right, so we've all been in a situation where you're out scouting and you find the perfect area that you want to set your trail camera trap up at, except there's one problem. All the trees in that area are too big to get a strap around. So what do you do? You got to use a trail camera mount. Bam, because you ain't gonna get this around the tree. Will not fit. Another thing about the straps is you're limited to vertical trees only. With the mounts, you can use vertical, parallel, horizontal, whatever you want like this blow down any way you want it you ever try tightening a strap down on a sapling it's pretty hard ain't it it's not with the mount another great thing about these mounts over straps is concealment imagine game walking through the woods or even a human thief walking through the woods they're going to be able to see that trail camera band all the way around the tree whereas you can only see the mount from the front now I told y'all this wasn't nothing fancy, but it works. It still allows you to use this mount. All this is is a two by two piece of scrap wood. You can see right here I drilled into it. And if you'll notice that washer, that is important because if you don't use a washer, this strap will pull straight off of that screw. So that washer needs to be there to prevent that from happening. Then all you'll do is take your mount and screw it into this wood. Now you don't have the benefits of being strapless, but you do have the benefits of the mount. Being able to pan any which way you need to. The mount still works the same. The only difference is, is you got a strap and you're not putting any screws in the tree. 
Now while we're out here, I wanted to go ahead and show y'all something. If you remember a couple of months ago, for those of y'all who have been following along, I did a video called Off-Season Hunting Projects where I planted switchgrass and Egyptian wheat at the end of the food plot on both ends and the one across the middle. This is the progress that's made in that time. This is the Egyptian wheat. As you can see, it's seven foot tall in some place and it's going to continue to grow throughout the summer. And the switchgrass is still down low, but that's why I planted the Egyptian wheat behind it so it could grow too. So next year, maybe the switchgrass will be up and I won't have to plant this Egyptian wheat anymore. But as you can see, it's making great screen. Now, if you remember in the last video, I stated that this thing will help prevent against theft. Keyword is help. I never stated it was 100% theft proof, but allow me to demonstrate. Out of sight, it's out of mind. Now, I'm sure they have them, but unless you know if thieves walk around in the woods with ladders, they're not going to be able to get to it even if they do see it. Hey, y'all, hang on a second. We got a, got a little young buck just walked out on us. He's probably about to win me. Alright, he gone y'all, but we better wrap this up because there's going to be more deer coming out here on this food plot. But if you're still watching and you ain't already, do me a favor in this bottom right hand corner there, click on that subscribe button. It don't cost a thing. I'd love to have y'all be a part of the Strung Out family and follow along with us. And if you want, click on that bell. All that does is give you future notifications of when we upload new episodes. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's video. Hope I was able to help y'all who didn't understand why you'd want to use a mount over a strap. And for those who wanted to use this but couldn't because of the screws. Alright, we'll see you next time right here on Strung Out Outdoors.